it in a gun we'll do that based on each install uh we're not gonna you know we're, we're not gonna uh, jump into this thing and say we're gonna be a certain type of offense right away you know our approach is gonna be comprehensive so we're gonna jump into it and uh we're gonna put the system in as a whole uh, the system can fit and can tailor to any type of player that we bring in here. We don't ever want to turn down a good player because he doesn't fit the system. And uh, as we get going, we want to make sure we tailor the system to the players we have and what they do best. So right now, we are uh, we just had a couple meetings here. We had one yesterday. We had one today. And we're just going through putting the general section stuff in, the beginning of the book in. Uh, we got lined up yesterday, and today we started putting some um, some simple run concepts in. But we want to make sure we get a look at these guys in pads and see what they do best before we, you know, try to guess on, uh, you know, the best way to go out and play. All right, guys, let's keep going. Uh, please um, note uh, to introduce yourself and uh, tell Coach which out you're with. It's the first time he's seeing most of y'all. So, uh, Jonathan Alexander, then Skylar Callahan. Hey, Ben. Jonathan Alexander, Charlotte Observer. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Um, let me ask you, when uh, when you look back at the film of this offense and, and why the quarterbacks, um, you know, may have struggled last year, what did you see? What, what did you determine from that? Well, we went back. One of the first things uh, I think you have to do is you have to go back and try to figure out <clears throat> why you're in the building. And there are a lot of good coaches. Excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> there are a lot of good coaches in the building and a lot of good players in the building. And when I went back, we started, we watched each game. Um, so we spent time together as a staff watching all 16 games. And we just had looked at the season and how it unfolded. Uh, those discussions, I think it's important, uh, you know, when things are said and things are done, we keep kind of those in-house right now. Uh, but there's a lot of reasons why. You know, maybe the win total wasn't what you desired uh, last year. And I think uh, Coach Rule hit it in the meeting this morning. I think the most important thing we can do is take care of the football. The ball's king. And if we start there and we, we do a better job taking care of the football moving forward, we're going to have a chance to be more successful on Sundays. Hey, Ben. Skylar Callan with Sports Illustrated. Welcome to Charlotte. Um, just wanted to get your – Thoughts on when you go through this draft process in, the, in a year like this where there's really not a clear-cut number one guy and there's multiple names at the top um, at quarterback, just what kind of things do you look for, whether it be on the field, off the field, in these interviews that you guys have just that, that may stick stick out to you? Yeah, uh, you know, I think you, you have to look at each position. I think it's an exciting year for the draft, that's for sure. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what, you know, what, what the narrative out there, but I think there are a lot of players that could jump up there early in the draft. There's a lot of, of qualified players. Um, but, you know, you're really looking for, you know, the whole package when you're picking up high and those are, uh, and you kind of want to see uh, how the player fits into, you know, your culture and fits into the brand. I'm a big believer uh, in the brand here that Coach Rule has, a uh, big believer in the plan to win. And I think uh, that's kind of your starting point there. Let's go to Darren Gant and Will Palachik. Hey, do man. Darren Gant, Panthers.com. Um, how would you describe what you want to do offensively, I guess, from a philosophy standpoint compared to what was here previously? What, what are the big differences in what you believe about offense? Well, I think, you know, the first thing, like I talked about, is we need to see what the players do well, and we need to put them in a uh, position to be successful and do what they do well. Now, a lot of the times you can't tailor to, to all the players, uh, but the, you can to the nucleus uh, of players. Uh, so that's that's number one. I think the most important thing for us, you know, philosophically is the game's about players, not plays. And <clears throat> we want to put the ball uh, in the players that can uh, greatly impact the game, put the ball in their hands. And we want to think of those players in critical times and put them in position to be successful so they can impact the game uh, in your favor. Uh, I think, you know, another thing that's important to me is we play, uh, whether we spread out or, or we play with a full back or we play with multiple tight ends, we could go any direction. That remains to be seen, but I think it's important that you have a physical, uh, heavy-handed play style in this league, that uh, you need to run the football and you need to run the football on your own terms. Now, those of you who know me and who've watched me, I like to, I like to throw the football, that's for sure. Uh, but there needs to be um, 
uh, times in the game and times in the season where you have to decide to run the football, and you have to be able to do that. And it gives you a chance to be successful. Hey, Ben, Will Pelagic, WFNZ Radio here in Charlotte. Um, the offensive line has undergone a massive transformation year over year, especially with the addition of Coach Campen. Uh, what did you like about the additions that were made, and how will that play change uh, year over year for you guys? Yeah, I like, uh, you know, when I came in, we started watching film. I think there's good pieces here on the offensive line. And I think Adam Bozeman and Adam Corbett did uh, nothing but help us and, and created depth and created competition right there. But there's some good young players who have to grow and they need to develop and they need to improve. And I can't think of a better guy to, to come in and help do it than Coach Campen. Um, he's a tremendous football coach. I worked with him for uh, for eight years in Green Bay. and. Uh, I know he's excited uh, to get out there on the field and get his hands on these guys. Is it a situation where you're looking at next Thursday and, you know, you're advocating for linemen over quarterback or quarterback over linemen? How, what is your role in that in that process uh, come next Thursday? Uh, you know, whatever, uh, you know, Mr. Tepper and Coach and, uh, and Scott ask, whatever they ask of me, I'll do. Uh, I'll give my input. I've given my input on a bunch of different players, uh, whether it's quarterbacks, linemen, you know, the whole the whole nine yards. And uh, you just kind of go through and tell them what you see and uh, tell them how they may fit uh, in, the, in the program and how they may fit and how you would use them in your offense. And, uh, you know, that's that's my role. Thank you. Welcome to town. Great to be here. All right, let's go to Joe and then Steve. And it's Joe Person with The Athletic. Good to see you. Good. Great to see you. That's Joe from uh, Williamsport. Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Great. Represent. Yes. Thank you for remembering. Um, you did a, a cool interview in 2018 with the New York Post where you were kind of breaking down the, the quarterbacks that had gotten drafted that year. And one of them was Sam. Mm -hmm. and you mentioned that you thought there was magic in his game but you didn't at the time really love the way he threw the ball. Wondered kind of if your opinion had changed at all over the years or just sort of what your opinion is of Sam. Yeah, you know, uh, Sam was one of the things, uh, one of the people that intrigued me to the job, to be honest with you. I, You know, I think Sam does have some magic in his game. I think he's got some athleticism to him. Uh, I'm excited to work with Sam, and uh, we've been working the last few days here uh, to kind of get up to speed on the offense. And he's shown uh, flashes of being a good player in this league and, you know, uh, working together. Hopefully we can get that to show up more consistently. That same article, you, you mentioned Baker, and you said he had an edge to his game, which you liked, but you weren't sold necessarily on his athleticism. Any, any change on how you view Baker over the years? I'd love to be able to comment on your question, but this isn't my first rodeo. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to keep the comments to the players on our roster right now. Thank you, Ben. Yep. Hey, Coach. Steve Reed from the Associated Press. Welcome to uh, Charlotte. Great uh, to see you. Great to see you. Um, I was wondering, you know, you have a you have a dynamic weapon, certainly, in, in Christian McCaffrey. Can you explain to us on, on what ways you would like to get the best out of him? And uh, secondly, I'd like to follow up with Will question do you prefer a tackle or a quarterback at number six that you can tell us uh let's you know with as far as christian goes you know we're just putting in the offense right now we'll get out in a couple weeks what we call phase two and kind of throw catch a little bit and run around and i'd like just like to see him you know in the offense i've seen him in different offenses before i just like to go out there get my hands on him a little bit and uh see how he responds he's certainly a guy that can uh you know with his past production, he can handle anything you throw at him. He, he can, you know, he can do a lot of different things for you. And uh, certainly that's exciting. Uh, as far as number six goes, you know, I'm a team guy first. So whatever's best for the football team, you know, whether it's offense, defense, special teams, whatever the case may be, trading back, I'm good, I'm good with it all as long as it helps the team. David Newton and then Ellis, please. Hey, Coach, I know you don't know where I'm from, but we did see each other. Uh, <laughs> Liberty, right? <laughs> Let's try out. But, uh, hey, understand the quarterback uh, likely will be the face of the organization. How much more intense is the vetting process at that position than any other in the draft from your experience? Uh, I think you uh, – you know, I've been around, long, uh, been around long enough to – 
to be comfortable enough in my own skin to, you know, you work the way you work and you evaluate the way you evaluate. And uh, I'm going to look at the position the same every year, whether you believe you're going to take one or whether you don't believe you're going to take one. I think it's always important that you do your due diligence, you know, dot the I's, cross the T's. And, uh, you know, the worst thing you can start doing uh, anything in life is start pressing. And that's the last thing I'll do. But regarding that, do you do more vetting a quarterback than you say would a guard or a line, you know, another position out there because he's got to be so much to a team? Yeah, I think you evaluate each position a little bit differently. Um, I think they all have, uh, you know, their little, uh, you know, their little intricacies you have to you have to dive into. But as far as changing that year to year, that's not something I'm willing to do. Okay, and you look at Stam as your starting quarterback. Sam is our starting quarterback, yes. And I'll let, you know, Coach Rule will obviously have a say over that, but the way it is in the building right now, Sam is our starting quarterback. Right. Coach, uh, Ellis Williams here, Charlotte Observer. Nice to see you again. Um, Good to see you. How's it going? Things are well, man. Welcome to Charlotte. Um, I'm wondering, you know, fans are familiar with you, most familiar uh, during your time with the New York Giants. And, you know, we've had a a good four or five years since then. I'm wondering, in your opinion, what have you learned about yourself? How have you expanded, grown um, as an offensive coordinator, as a play caller in between then and now? Yeah, so I've, uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough, you know, as we all know, they're coaches are hired to be fired in this business and I was blessed to have the opportunities I've had in the past and I'm blessed to have this one uh, during my time away I spent a lot of time uh, you know either watching tape uh, talking to people who can help me you know one of the things I've been working on is being better talking to you people so you know announcing the starting quarterback here I just put my foot in the mouth so I that wasn't something I should have said but uh, uh, you know so I spent some time visiting some different uh, different camps and uh, talking to a lot of coaches, a lot of different players, had a chance to work down in Jacksonville uh, with a good group of coaches. We had a rough year, but had a chance to learn a different system there. And then being in Dallas last year, uh, you know, being with Mike and just seeing how he created the culture there in Dallas and working with Dan Quinn on defense and Kellen Moore on offense and uh, just having to, you know, learn diff both sides of the ball and, and work on both sides of the ball was a lot of fun, you know, put a spin on both sides of the ball for both different coordinators and, and helped any way I could. So I think, you know, if you're not getting better in this profession, you're getting worse. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a little bit about how I spent my time. I tried to be, uh, you know, a better, better husband and a father than I probably was in New York in the, you know, in the past, uh, you know, that's, it's up for debate whether I did a good job of that or not, but I, I put some effort into it. Great answer. Thanks, Coach. Yep, thank you. Let's try. We're getting a little time on time, so let's try to hit some folks that haven't uh, had a chance yet. Uh, we'll go Sheena, then Cameron, then uh, Mike, and we'll see where we're at. Good afternoon, Coach. Sheena Quick with Fox Sports 1340 AM. How are you this afternoon? I'm doing great. I can't see you. I just see your name. Oh, sorry about that. But um, Okay. I know you mentioned a little bit earlier that this draft class is interesting and exciting. What are some of the things that jump out to jump out at you when it comes to the quarterbacks and the tackles? Uh, the quarterbacks and the tackles. I just think, you know, up front, whether it's, uh, you know, tackles or guards or interior players, there's just a lot of guys that can play the game. It just seems like it's a deeper draft that way. Uh, so it just kind of really depends on what you like and what you're looking for what floats your boat. Uh, and the same thing with the quarterback position. You know, you got all these different flavors out there. Just what, uh, you know, what are you looking for? So there's a bunch of different guys that can play. Uh, guys with good skill sets, guys that are smart. The guys seem to be more athletic than maybe they were in the past, just as a consensus. So, you know, it'll, it'll be interesting to see uh, see how things go. A well, quick follow up on that. Um, I know that a lot of mention was made that this was the most unpolished draft as far as quarterbacks and things like that. There wasn't a lot of star power. If if in, if you see any players that are, um, I guess, start ready or week one ready, who jumps out at you? Yeah, that's probably a question that uh, we'll we'll save for a little bit later. Uh, I'm not uh, comfortable talking about that right now. We haven't had our draft meetings yet, and we haven't had the draft yet. So I'll keep that one to myself. But I appreciate the question. Understood. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Ben, how you doing, man? Cam Wolf, NFL Network. Good to see Um, you, Cam. Good good to see you too, man. Uh, Just following up on Sheena, I guess there's been a lot of conversations about readiness for the quarterback prospects. 
how do you evaluate that traits versus the readiness to contribute immediately? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a big swing for the fences kind of guy. So just cause you're ready doesn't mean you're going to be the best. Uh, but ready does factor in some scenarios. I think that, um, uh, you know, experience obviously, obviously helps. The more games you play helps. I think your experiences under what type of system you played in may help some guys over others. Or, And I also think maybe experiences in all-star games may help some guys over others. Uh, but at the end of the day, you have to pick a player that you're going to be happy with at that position, hopefully for the next decade. And readiness, it plays a part, but it's not everything. If I could follow up with just a little of a scheme question. Uh, there's a couple quarterbacks here that are, coming from like a RPO centric offense. I'm curious how you see that translate to this league and maybe how easy it is to get that type of system into maybe what you would like to run. Yeah, I think, uh, again, it's a big, it's to me, it's a skill set question. What kind of skill sets guys have? And uh, I love this stuff. I could talk about it all day. Probably got to be careful about what I say, but uh, you know, when these guys play in these RPO offenses, they usually have a pretty good feel on where to go with the ball and they can pull the, the trigger pretty quickly. And I think those are two things that are very, very valuable in this league. Appreciate you, man. Yep. Hey, Ben, Mike Solarte, Spectrum News One. Welcome to Charlotte. Good to see you. Thank you. Good uh, to see you. The uh, the question I have, you were, I want to make sure I've got this right now, because you said you like to throw, but you also want to be able to run on your own terms. And you're not ready to commit to a style of offense until you can get out and see the guys do what they do on the field in person. Do I have that right? You're good. I might as well just go. You can take it no, from I, here. I just, I just want to make sure. I'm, I just want to make sure I'm following along here. Uh, so that, all that being said, are you looking at this offense without committing to a style that sort of thing as a tear down, rebuild, uh, an augmentation? I mean, what is kind of your overall overarching thought on what you have to work with, what you've seen on tape, and the potential of some of the guys that you've witnessed, uh, you know, watching play. Uh, it's not a tear down to me in any stretch of the imagination. We have good players here, and uh, you know we—I didn't come here to lose. I can't I believe. I believe in, uh, like I said earlier, I believe in the brand. I believe in coaches' plan to win. Now, the foundation's there. The wins may not have been, have been there yet, but the foundation's there, and I see an avenue to win. You know, when we go on the field, we just have to ask the players to do what they do best, and. You're going to throw the ball at times a little more than you're going to run it. You're going to run it at times more than you're going to throw it. But that has to be a decision. You can't be forced to do those things. You have to do them on your terms. Uh, and we will be physical and we will be heavy-handed. But you can do that in a variety of different run concepts. It doesn't have to be one. Great. Thank All right, you. guys, we're, we're getting tight here. So let's just do two quick ones to finish off. We'll go Vashti and then finish with Jonathan Alexander. Hi, Coach. Uh, Bash Tyhert with Carolina Blitz. I, I just following up on what you said earlier, you said that Sam Darnold was one of the, the was one of the things that intrigued you about this job. I wanted to know what else intrigued you about taking this position. Uh, a lot of it, you know, is is what I just said. Uh, I believe in Coach. I followed Coach. You know, we worked uh, with similar people in New York. We weren't there together. Uh, had a chance to see how he developed the program in Temple. Had a chance to see how he took Baylor and uh, got them back on track after some very tough times. And uh, I talked to him, you know, the first couple years on the job, just nothing really worked out. Uh, I believe in, in, the, in the brand. I believe in the plan to win. And I see a foundation being set. I see the effort that the guys play with on Sundays. I see that uh, there's an avenue to win. And I, I believe that I got on at the right time. And, uh, you know, Matt Rule mentioned uh, that one of the reasons why he hired you was because of your experience in developing quarterbacks or helping quarterbacks, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think he particularly pointed out Eli Manning. So I was wondering, what do you think was the reason why you were successful in that instance in helping Eli Manning have such an improved year um, in that year? Well, I mean, that's probably a better question for Eli than it is for me. But one thing I do believe is, uh, you know, I think you need to train the players fundamentally. And the quarterback position, you need to train him fundamentally. You need to hold his feet to the fire, and then you need to build everything around his fundamentals and make sure it fits like nuts and bolts. Um, and you need to train him to play the way you want to play and, you know, take the handcuffs off, so to speak, roll the ball out there and let him go and teach him how you want him to play and let him play the game. He's throwing it. You're not. If it's in the playbook, 
you better like it. It's in there. It has your name on it. That's what I believe. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Coach, for taking the time. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ben.